Thank you. So we're going to have a presentation? Or? There is no presentation. Okay. Here. All right. So this is a public hearing. If anybody would like to speak on the BSI underground utility assessment, now would be the time. Please take this podium to my right. State your name. You have three minutes. Anybody like to speak on this? Nobody. Nobody. Public hearing, BSI undergrounding. Well, well, this is the easy one. This is somewhat easy. <laughs> somewhat easy, yeah. I guess uh, no one's getting up. I'll have to move to close public hearing. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. I would um, like, Mayor, I'd like to move approval. Uh, I'd like to make a comment that um, based on all of the issues relative to um, a conflict of interest, uh, not conflict of interest, it's the... Um, Potential voting conflict? Yeah, the, you know, the ethics issues, those kinds of things. Um, I do not own, I live in Burnt Star Isles, I do not own investment property in Burnt Star Isles. So based on the fact that it's just my domicile and um, I don't feel that there's a conflict of interest here, um, so I would like to, um, and based on the fact that the residents did move uh, to have us uh, go forward with this and the city's already expended the money, I would uh, move approval. Second. So we have a motion and a second um, for approval, and we all have had the um, written objections in our packet that we yes. have reviewed. And I've responded to these residents and explained to them what the process has been, um, the comments that have been uh, come back to me have been um, really encouraging us to have many more public um, meetings about the process once the, the Florida Power and Light um, results are in and that, you know, a, a vote, uh, a further vote be during season and those kinds of things. So there's a lot of uh, valuable information and, and dialogue and the uh, residents um, um, for the most part understand. Um, and it's been a long delay. So I think that has also been part of the issue of it was approved two years ago, mm -hmm. and but there was um, a significant amount of uh, negotiation on the part of our city manager and the Burnt Star Isles Canal or Canal Advisory, uh, the uh, Underground Wiring Committee, with Florida Power and Light to get them to do the project for what they said it they're going to do it for, um, and that took quite some time um, because they try to um, get a lot more out of us. And so I commend Howard and the committee for really um, their tenacity in getting it to this point. So. Um. Okay, so we have a motion, a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. <coughs> okay, next we have a word of agreement to Avon Construction of Punta Gorda, Florida for the construction of the Gilchrist Park Playground restroom. <clears throat> Again, we got the, uh, it's the lowest responsive bidder, and we'd like to get started on it. Uh, it's coming from sales tax and impact fees. Just a comment. Clearly this <laughs> exceeded our budget uh, for this restroom, but it's been a long time coming, and I just don't think we can, we can <coughs> squeeze any more out of it. I mean, we have to get it under construction. There are some options we need to show you, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lynn. Um, I, I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Kelly from the Mural Society, and she told me that the um, the playground, the Friends of the Playground, have I expressed interest in having a mural put on the side of the bathroom facility, which will require it to have stucco sides <coughs> rather than siding on the sides. Okay. So that may be one of the things we should take into consideration when we vote on this. Okay. <coughs> setting it up. Good morning, uh, Marion Pace, procurement manager for the record. Uh, procurement um, solicited bids for the construction of the pl um, playground restroom. In the base bid was included the uh, base options, which would be the, um, the standing seam is in the base option. There is an optional 
deduct for the 5V crimp as seen in the um, presentation prepared by um, Urban Design. The metal roof material, as far, uh, far as a standing seam, it does match the existing new pavilions out at the park. Uh, they have concealed fasteners, which um, affords for no maintenance. The cost is a little bit higher, um, but it does have the lower maintenance. The optional 5V crimp uh, matches the nearby residential roofs. It does have the exposed fa um, fasteners, which will require maintenance um, to replace them every 20 years. That's a little bit lower, which that's the option to deduct, um, but it will have the higher maintenance cost. On uh, option two, the cement board lap siding is included in the base bid. Uh, there is an optional deduct uh, for stucco siding. And the um, cement board lap siding is similar to many of the residents. Um, it still does require painting for maintenance and it's a little higher cost initially and it's equivalent maintenance down the road as far as painting and maintaining it as the stucco siding. Uh, the stucco siding does not uh, match the um, some of the residents nearby and it still has the same maintenance, but it is a lower initial cost. So that would be the deduct option option. Oh, Joan said we could, could stucco just one side for a mural. Do we know exactly where they want the mural? We have an idea, don't we? Yes, we do. And we would process that as a change order, um, okay. discuss it with Avant, who's out in the audience today, um, as far as just doing maybe one wall. Uh, staff's recommendation is to stay with the standing seam roofing that's in the base bid, and also the cement board lap siding that is in the base bid, instead of accepting the optional deducts. Well, the, the roof, I think, is less maintenance is, is a good the way to go. It, and it, it's going to match what we already have over there. Mm -hmm. So I would be in favor of keeping the higher quality roof. Mm -hmm. As far as the lap board, if we can, if we can make sure that the, the mural, the Friends of the, the Gilchrist Park are, are okay with um, having just their area stuccoed <coughs> for their mural, I would be fine with that. Which wall would the mural be on and where would it be facing? <coughs> it's going to be in the playground side. In the playground side mm -hmm. as well? Playground side. Playground side, correct. Mm -hmm. So is everybody okay with that? I'm okay with that. Yeah. So we're not taking the deducts. Okay. In the agreement, when you um, execute the agreement, Mayor, there is a page that has um, for the agreement pricing, no options selected. Um, so if you can initial that along with signing the agreement. Okay. That would, that would. All right, so we need um, an approval of the award. I'll make a motion for approval. Yes. Uh, I'll second, but do we need to have it in there that there's, that no, we are. You um, didn't take the options? No, no. that we are um, uh, keeping um, one area stucco for the mural. Does that need to be a part of the motion? I think we should. You want me, we Definitely could even yeah. write it on yeah, the award. That. Okay. Yeah. So is that part of your motion? Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Okay, then I'll second it. We have a motion, a second um, to <coughs> to approve the award with the without the options and with the wall for the mural. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, next we have award of agreement to JRL underground utilities for drainage improvements and swale grading. Mary, Marion Pace, procurement manager again. Uh, this is for the drainage and reswale um, or regrading the swales. Um, we went out for bid, we received three bids. One bid was not accepted because they were in default of the past contract. Um, so we included their pricing in the evaluation only for informational purposes only. Uh, JRL Underground was deemed the lowest responsive responsible bidder. We have checked their references and they received very good references. Uh, I've also spoke with um, Jean, who's the owner, and advised them they will hit the ground running. And we are having a um, kickoff meeting tomorrow afternoon to get them um, going and 
with their scopes of work. Lynn? Do we have anything in the contract that, um, that puts them on the spot in case they decide to walk off the job like the last contractor did? It's really kind of hard to do liquidated damages in this type of contract. Um, so it would basically, it would just be a default clause and they would, would not be able to submit a bid to the city again. So we can't put any kind of a, a default penalty in there? We could maybe see about negotiating some sort of deficiency um, uh, credits for if they have any deficiencies, if they don't complete a work, uh, complete a schedule or what have you, and make a monetary automatic deduct, which we do have in some of our performance contracts. We can discuss that with them. I'd like to see something like that put into the contract. Do an, could we do an, um, discuss it in an amendment or not award the- Anybody else think? I don't think we should be doing this at all. <laughs> <laughs> They're very consistent. I know you, I know you this can. is coming out of the general fund that has a substandard reserve. I just wanted to be clear that I'm not going to stand in the way of this, obviously, but I think this is something that should be, be falling on the actual property owners whose swales we're repairing, uh, and I'm very clear about that. I think that this is not a this is a slippery slope we're going down. We're trying to give all of our constituents everything they want without being able to ask them for the funding. If we were to, in our budget, put a line item to specifically fund this by increasing a millage rate by whatever, then I would, I would uh, also still go along with it reluctantly because I still think we should be responsible individuals for our own property and maintain our properties appropriately according to code. And uh, that's just the way I feel about it. I haven't changed. Then we shouldn't be approving this. You can. <laughs> you know, there's four other people up here. <clears throat> How long is this contract good for? Uh, Three-year initial with a three-year renewal. I mean, would you want to limit the term? We had two bidders, and this one was much lower than the second. The uh, third was rejected. So, and I mean, we really need, if we have the program in place, <laughs> much to your chagrin, it's in place, and we need to, I mean, the people that we've served are much happier with, their drainage than they were in the past. That's a good deal. Uh, I, you know, there was, if you read next door, I mean, there are people that are arguing now that we should be uh, changing and paying for the um, driveways with swales in them, and we should be paying to redo their driveways, um, which is, that's crazy. Um, we don't redo driveways. The driveways are individual property owners' decisions. Um, and so we've kind of given this, I, I, I have to agree with Ferry that we have given everybody this, this um, indication that, that we're gonna solve everything mm -hmm. and um, that's not what this is for. Um, we are, we're using this money to, to take care of the, the grass in the swales and not their driveways, um, but I think we've, We've discussed this so many times. Um, we've, yeah, we've I totally agree with Gary. However, the other side of it is we have so educated everybody that this is what, the way we're going to do things um, that for us to just turn around and it's just. I, I, and we've started the program already, so we have, we're, in, we're kind of into it at this and point. And people the other issue, know where they're at on the list. Right. The other issue that really arises with this is that you know, are we going to get into that now? Having uh, public works go around and um, s cite people for you're the you're the the person who's causing the drainage issue. Um, when people are maintaining their homes, they feel like they have a lovely lawn, and yet they're the ones who have the thatch in the lawn that's causing the problem. And so th then we have to to come up with a whole nother um, program. Yeah. So it, it's. And we've discussed this before, and we've been down this route road. So, um. just point of information: mm -hmm. my block drains very well. <laughs> I have a neighbor across the street; they put in new sod. The, the contractor they did did not properly adjust the swale. The city made them pull up the sod and redo the swale on a new addition. So, I have a neighbor that forego that cost, or their contractor in this case did that cost based on what city code is. 
So we're being selective on who we're enforcing the code on. It's not being equitably enforced across the board on all of our constituents, our citizens, and property owners. That's my comment. Thank you. So what would you like to do with this During contract? Project, yeah. Do we want to approve it? Do we want to change it? Do we want an amendment? I mean, I'm in, I'm in favor of moving forward. Yeah, and just to address your uh, question, Mayor, on the term of the contract, we, we do have a uh, termination for convenience. We do have the right to cancel the contract in any year should we choose not to move forward with it or decide to decide go Decide to go out. in a different direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I would, I would move approval at this time. I would agree with that. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the contract. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Four to one. Mayor, may, can, may we go back to the Avant construction um, con <coughs> contract for just further clarification? I found the, the, um, the provision in the contract where you wanted the mayor to initial um, the no options um, selected. But we did say um, that we were going to require just one of the walls to be stuccoed. How do you want that to be addressed? If we may um, address it at a staff level and go into, um, just go into immediate negotiations with Avant to give us a change order for just stuccoing that one wall. Can we get uh, Avant's representative to state um, that, that they will agree to a reduction in the price based on what, um, what the change order Bring. will be? You gotta come to the podium, please. <clears throat> My name is Fine Matesis from Avant Construction. Uh, yes, we will do a revision and we replace the siding part of that section for stucco. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are good on both of those awards. Now we have appropriation. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that the record's clear, ma'am. And, 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 and that will result in a reduction in the cost uh, as, as negotiated. Correct. She stated correct for the record. Correct, Thanks. correct. Thank you. Next, we have appropriation of funds for the reconfiguration of Lashley Park parking. And that's, this is the contract to award. So we can get uh, moving on, on this project. We talked about it under CRA. Any questions or comments? I'd move approval. Second. We have a motion, a second to approve the appropriation for the Lashley Park parking. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Carried unanimously. Next, we have appropriation of funds for Harbor Walk West Area 1 enhancements. Lynn, did, Lynn, do you have anybody here for the gas pump? Did anybody come? Mm -mm. Okay. So Kristen Simeone, Interim Finance Director, I'm just gonna speak towards the appropriation part, but um, we have additional revenue coming into our 1% sales tax, so we're gonna appropriate the additional revenue and then um, also appropriate the expenditure of the $50,000. And any questions on the project? Joan is here. Any questions on the project? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I can understand the the um, <clears throat> placement of most of the the trees. I was wondering um, why there would be three of the oaks right down the middle of the of the park in a row like that. I just for the record, I'm sure that as a, as an arborist, <laughs> you've got a great explanation. I just. For the record, Joan LeBeau, Urban Design Manager. Mitchell and I, when we were walking the site, there were trees originally planted throughout the center of the event area, and it provided shade for everybody who was there. But the way that they were placed, um, you could not see the view shed from the outside of the area. So we, in turn, placed those trees outside of the line of sight for the view shed of that roadway. Mm -hmm. um, they can be moved to other areas, uh, but it does provide some shade for people who are gonna be there. They're far enough apart that it will allow the flow of the event to, to maintain, gives the people the shade, and that was one of the um, tasks we were tasked with when we mm -hmm. pr put this together. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Great explanation. <laughs> So this will make sure that no one gets to park on the grass ever, right? <laughs> We're trying. 
Mm. I actually got asked that question, believe it or not. Mm. <laughs> so do we have um, a motion to approve the appropriation? I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the appropriation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, we're gonna, if you're so inclined, I would like to take the three items under new business since we have some business owners here who um, are here to hear those items and then come back to the utilities capital improvement update. Would that be okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're moving into new business, the first of which is TU02-18. Temporary use permit. This is a um, urban design. We're doing the IKEA star. She knows, okay. she's, she's getting her technology in place. Good morning, Lisa Hannon, zoning official. Um, staff has received a request for a, a security boundary fence for the uh, IKEA Staw property. We have received um, correspondence from their um, environmentalist that has contacted FWC that there is not a permit necessary um, regarding the clearing to make sure it's minimal. And as long as the fence and associated clearing will not impact the nest and the work is done when the eagles are done nesting for the 17-18 season, which nesting season has been completed at this time, and I believe it is um, at the end of May. May 15th is usually the um, ending of nesting season. So uh, staff recommends approval. It's a six foot vinyl coated chain link fence. Um, a fence, an actual fence permit through the building department will be required prior to construction and any type of electrically charged or barbed wire uh, fences uh, specifically prohibited. But the, there were some police reports that were included in the application documents. So they've had a lot of trespassing and some theft of their security cameras. So. And the applicant is here. Does anybody have any questions or Lynn? I just have a comment. Um, the Federal Eagle Protection Act states that you have to be 660 feet away from the, the eagle's nest in order to do any kind of construction activity, and there is absolutely no way that, that this fence is gonna be that far away on the front side. Correct, and when they, oh, I do have an email that their environmentalists um, sent to the Migratory Bird Permit Office in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, and her response was, so long as the fence and associated clearing will not impact the nest and the work is done when the eagles are done nesting for the 17-18 season, it is fine to move forward without a permit. Regarding the clearing, please make sure it is minimal and the nest tree doesn't become susceptible to wind damage. Okay, well the eagles are still in the nest. I've seen them personally and I have photos of them. And, um, and there are several other people who are sending me photos on a regular basis. Um, and, and my concern is that the, the Eagle Protection Act does state very clearly that any activity that takes place within um, less than 660 feet from the nest that would any, in any way disrupt the eagles in that nest, whether it's construction, whether it's noise, whether it's traffic, any, anything that disrupts that nest is not legally allowed. I do have a very big concern about this. Yes, if, if I may respond, uh, good morning. Name, please. Yes, yep. Daniel diaz Ballart. Uh, I'm a lawyer and I represent the property owner. Uh, good morning to you all. Uh, Council, uh, Woman Matthews, I, I understand your concern. And just to kind of touch on what uh, Ms. Hannon already mentioned, we did reach out to um, Oguanda Kirkpatrick, who's with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Migratory Bird Division. Um, and she is the authority, frankly, uh, on these matters and Eagles issues uh, in our area. Uh, and we informed them of our desire to put up this temporary nest and we uh, informed her. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> the temporary fence, exactly. Um, and we informed her specifically uh, that the fence will be within 330 feet and as close as 100 feet to this nest. Um, and she responded to that uh, a specific permit from their office is not required that we are um, allowed to put up this fence uh, as long as we take these precautions which she, she suggested, which we are most certainly doing. Um, uh, we're not impacting the nest in any way and, uh, and it be done after the uh, nesting season which uh, ended in May. So 
uh, we understand your concerns and, and we're going to do everything uh, in our power along with the, uh, the company that's going to put up the fence to make sure that the, the nest is not disturbed uh, at all. But this, in fact, was cleared with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and, and they did uh, approve of the temporary fence. Well, respectfully, I have to disagree because I've seen the eagles. They're still in the nest and they're still actively in the nest. So I think we have to disagree on this one. And I think just from the, the police reports that we they're already being disrupted by people dumping and people going in there that should not be allowed. So um, putting up the fence will actually prevent some more disruption, I believe, because they clearly have had dumping and they've clearly had theft. And if people, you know, want to go in there right now, they can. So I think um, for security, it would be a good idea to protect mm -hmm. the property and to protect the birds. I was, I was just going to ask the question for clarity that the purpose of this fence would uh, also uh, prevent uh, uh, extraneous interruption to the, uh, to the eagles because of incursion. Um, I'd also just like to share with you, uh, uh, during my college years, I did uh, assist in a field study of a raptor bird. They weren't uh, bald eagles, they were red-tailed hawks, but they're very close relatives. A couple of things about them is, is when we would go into the field to study them and we would build a blind uh, basically in a neighboring tree, um, the good news is they can't count. Uh, the bad news is, is when we would, as we would walk in to do our food study, they would be disrupted, they would leave the nest, they'd circle us, they would be rather upset, but as soon as we left, we would leave one of us behind in the blind and then they were just fine because they can't count. So the point being is, is that Yes, during the daytime, during construction of the fence, the raptors are going to be annoyed, okay? But as soon as those individuals leave, they'll settle in and calm down. That's just the natu natural behavior of these types of, of, of birds. Uh, and if that reduces the amount of continual disruption of them uh, uh, on an intermittent basis because of people that may not have the best um, things in mind to do, uh, by keeping them, that I think this is probably in the, in, the, in the greater good for the for the eagles themselves as well as maintaining the security of the property, just from my perspective. Irregardless of whatever development is going to go on there in the future, the way it sits right now to protect the eagles, I think it's to the eagles' benefit to put a security fence up. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? So we need a motion. A motion for approval. I second. We have a motion and a second to approve the temporary use permit. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Four to one. Okay, next we have Smuggler's Event Management 4th of July Festival Park Fee Waiver Request, which I received a letter from Mr. Cleffy because last year we did um, give him a fee waiver because he, uh, with the fireworks show that he does put on at the park, it he needs almost a, a whole week, I believe, to reserve the park and to get um, everything secure for the fantastic fireworks show that the city does not pay for, that the private entity pays for. And so last year we had given him a fee waiver, but it was only for one year. So i um, hoping that we can um, have it for some period of time or uh, whatever your pleasure is as far as what kind of, a, if you want to hear it every year, if you, if you want to, you know, what would staff recommendation be, Lisa? Uh, for council consideration, of course, but um, the request was for for the next five years. Um, they have put on the fireworks show for several years with the um, setup, cleanup, and the actual event times. The park rental fees are and with the damage deposit is approximately um, two thousand dollars. We do still collect the damage deposit, which is refundable if there's no damage or additional cleanup by city staff. Questions, comments? Just a, a question. Um, is there any way that we can draft an agreement with smugglers about this if this is approved that um, there's nothing that says that they will sponsor the event if we approve this for five years? So I, I, my question is, if we approve it, how are we guaranteed that smugglers will actually be the company that does the firework display for us? And do we want to make a five-year commitment um, not knowing that? I mean, because, you know, somebody from let's just say Sunseeker or some other company comes in and decides that they would like to um, take over the, the project. Yeah, okay. I would recommend that we make a motion that it's only for smugglers events 
and that that would take care of it. It's not for any other entity. That would work. Okay, that covers yeah, it. Yeah, good point. Would that be okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need a motion, motion for to include. Okay, so to, what is your to include smugglers only for the next five years? Smugglers event management to have a park waiver for the Fourth of yeah. July mm -hmm. festival. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Now, just so the record's clear, that doesn't mean that if somebody else comes in and wants to do this and Smugglers doesn't want to do it, that Smugglers has the opportunity to prevent somebody else from coming in. Right. But this waiver is for the benefit of Smugglers as long as the Smugglers is the one that's going to be um, uh, sponsoring the, the event. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, next we have discussion of gas pump security measures related to card skimmers. Do I have some photos in there? You're going to take it? Uh, uh, Chief Davis, are you going to speak to this? I, I can talk about, if you guys have questions, I'm, I'm here, but um, I don't okay. know if you want to start and I can chime in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked for this to be brought up because we've had our first instance of um, that's, that's a gas right pump skimmer um, on May 3rd at the mobile station at Burnt Store Road in 41. And uh, I've been watching this um, gas skimmer problem occurring in all different surrounding neighborhoods in the community. And uh, Cape Coral has gone so far as to uh, um, enact an ordinance that protects the people in the city and the visitors to the city that every gas pump must have a locking device on it or the, um, the owner of the gas station can actually put a device in each pump that um, shuts the pump down when an illegal activity is, uh, is determined to be taking place in the pump. So I just thought that um, as a proactive measure that we should consider putting an ordinance in place that governs the city uh, gas stations that gives us something to enforce if there's a problem. I would hope that we never have another instance, but there was another one in Port Charlotte again yesterday. So um, it's, it's a very real problem. We have a lot of folks who are getting their credit compromised, and, I'm, and I have a big concern for the safety of the people that live here and the visitors to our city. So I think it, it's time to have the conversation. Yes. Okay, so I'd like to add to the conversation. Uh, I think there's some issues as far as enforcement, et cetera, goes. However, as I'd had a short conversation with uh, uh, Chief Davis and some other individuals, we probably have already been victims and don't know about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and also in, in talking with uh, uh, about just gas stations, it can be a little bit more encompassing because these things are even available for the little portable skimmers that you'll see when you go to the Tiki Hut. You know, that those things can those types of devices can also be compromised. So there's gonna there's it's it's a sign of the time of, of the technology and what's going on. <coughs> I think that uh, I agree with I agree with uh, with you, uh, uh, Lynn, that we should uh, be proactive. Uh, I think that the conversation needs to be a continual conversation beyond what today from time to time to see how we can address these problems for our citizens in the future. So uh, I just wanted to make those comments that it's not going to be, we can pass this we, resolution, we can, we can do that, but it's still going to be difficult to enforce uh, because it's not going to be just the gas stations, ATM machines, et cetera. So I just want to make sure that we're all clear on that. Thank you. Good morning, Chief Pam Davis with the Punta Gorda Police Department. I actually brought in a picture of the one that we found in the early part of May. So if you can kind of tell, that's the pump opened up and the skimmer is on the inside. So a lot of questions I get is how do I, how can I tell that there's a skimmer on these gas station pumps? And 95% of the time you can't because they're on the inside. So um, having that, and these gas pumps generally have kind of a, a universal key which is how these people can get into them. So having them have a unique key for each gas station is a, is a, a good deterrence. Um, and if they go even further and make the pump able to malfunction, if anybody opens that, that's even better. But um, mm -hmm. at Cape Coral so far, it's very early, so they haven't been able to really tell their success rate. Uh, I do know that <coughs> at one time last year it was 11 and they only had nine so far this year. Um, I have a feeling that the fact that they have this ordinance is probably pushing the criminals up this way. So, which is why we had, which is why we had one May 4th. So, um, 
So it's it's not a bad idea to kind of be talking about this and whether the enforcement issue, um, yeah, that it would have to be spot checks all the time going out to make sure that, that this is there. Right now, the Department of Agriculture requires the blue security tape on the pumps, and if it's broken, so just so you guys know as citizens, if it's broken, call the Department of Agriculture and say, hey, uh, this pump's blue tape's not on here. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's, it's again, it's getting people out there to be able to enforce it. Mm -hmm. So basically, with Cape Coral, they 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 it's an extra locking device on the out, outside. There's three three choices uh, for these business owners. You can put the different locking device so that it the key is unique just to that gas station, or you can put a system in place that if that thing's open without if the pumps open without, I guess a code um, a code that's unique, it'll shut down the whole pump so that nobody can use it. And then the third one is to put an encryption um, device that encrypts all of our credit card information when we use the pump. Mm -hmm. So there's three options that a business owner can use. Mm -hmm. Nancy, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was just a couple things. One is what, where is the, if you can point out in this picture what we're looking at, what, which, where is the, the right skimmer? Here. Right I there? Have, I have okay. a, a, another picture of it just by itself. Um, I, you know, I understand what um, Gary is talking about. I know someone who's a flight attendant um, who just it by itself there, and it just plugs it. into their circuit board. Um, I, I, somebody who's a flight attendant and they're walking, you know, whose credit card information got picked up just on the plane by somebody. Um, one of, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's it is the time that we're living in. Um, and um, talking with uh, Commissioner Tuseo, who's actually proactively put locks on all of his, and the one that happened there was that somebody forgot to shut lock, yeah. somebody forgot to mm -hmm. lock it, and that quickly somebody put a skimmer in. Yeah. So, um, and I, I was stopped at the new Wawa to look and see where, if I could see where the tape was, there, I couldn't detect any tape, but there's locks. Okay. Their pumps have locks, and that's in looking at um, in preparing for this and looking at what is the industry going toward. The industry is encouraging locking pumps. Yes. Um, and the state statute doesn't address that, so uh, the state is yet to to get go this far. Um, but I think that the petroleum dispensing industry is. That's where they're headed with this. So, and you would think the business would want that because then they advertise, "Hey, I have safer mm -hmm. pumps." Then, yeah, you know. yeah. So, um, I think it's. I know that the county has not talked about this issue, um, and as we annex and we bring in more, um, that can, we could bring in some um, particular potentially, a gas station that has not yet addressed this, but. Um, I would think that owners would want to secure their pro their pumps. So, Gary, uh, uh, just two items I'd like to add. One is, um, whatever we probably propose for security measures today that we would like to see mm -hmm. will have an obsolescence six months to a couple years, high likely because of the, how quickly things change. But with that said. Um, I just have a, a question. How burdensome is the cost of altering these to the actual vendor themselves? And I don't have, I don't have the answer for that. No, so. you, 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 there, there's the balance in that, too. You also don't want to put a burdensome cost. Right. I mean, if, when you, I, think, I think changing a lock on a pump is probably not so burdensome. Mm -hmm. okay? But if you're asking them to do a $10,000 modify, I'm just taking the, right. you know how I do with my numbers, everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, but if it costs $10,000 a pump to modify them to secure them, that's probably mm -hmm. not realistic yeah. either. I think it's once a, you get into the other security measures, yes, you're going to pay more, but it's probably a couple hundred bucks a pump to do the key. Okay. Mm -hmm. To do the locks? To do the locks, I mean, yeah. Because obviously an encryption device sounds much more expensive yes. than a lock mm -hmm. and a key. Yeah, it probably does. Um, the, the, the fine is a little steep here, too, $250 per pump. I mean, like in the, in the instance that you said, you know, if it did happen that way and it was human error and they did, you know, have the key, the locks changed and all that, I would hope that we you would have to, yes, yeah. say, 
we would hope that, I mean, if we could get some voluntary, I don't know that we, do we need an ordinance or is there any way to do some voluntary From outreach? Uh, we, we will, we'll definitely go out and talk to the gas stations and whether they'll do it or not. Right. Because I, I think, you know, they're managed by different people than the owners and the managers come and go, so. Mm -hmm. I, I can speak to um, personally having been affected by this problem. I, I had my car skimmed at a gas station in Port Charlotte a few years ago, and within 10 minutes they had already spent $15,000. Wow. So wow. it is a real problem. It is a real problem, mm -hmm. and we ha I think we need to do something that, that can be enforceable by the police department, and that's just my opinion about it. Yeah, I agree. I'm just saying anything we do is not going to solve the problem. It's going to temper it. Mm -hmm. right. And we should, and I agree with you. We should do what we can to temper it for our citizens and visitors, etc. So, what do you want to do with the item? Do you want to bring forth the similar ordinance? Yes, that would be my suggestion. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you want to bring forth an ordinance? We can. Okay. It sounds like the okay. police need some kind of enforcement mechanism right. to right. make maybe, it happen. Maybe we could put a uh, a caveat that uh, individuals convicted would be required to repair swales in the city. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> So bad. <laughs> <They're> so bad. <laughs> okay, so we finished new business. Now we're going back to under budget, uh, letter F. Uh, fiscal year 19 to 23 utilities capital improvement program and fiscal year 19 utilities operation fund budget status update. This is going to take a while. Can we break for a second? We could take it. Does everybody want a little break? I could use a break. Okay. Sure. It's 1036, so we'll come back at 1045.